Noah Ida Ong's Palau is a place of heartbreaking beauty, an island nation dotting tropical seas 600 miles east of the Philippines, a fragile string of South Pacific gems threatened by suddenly accelerated development. As a Palawan, we like to share our, our things with people, so I like to share it with, the, with our friends, our visitors, and you know, just uh, sharing of the, uh, this valuable thing we have. And visitors come, tens of thousands each year, to share this sensuous place. They dive among nearly perfect coral reefs of ecological diversity rivaling tropical rainforests, suspend themselves in one of the seven underwater wonders of the world. Some visitors do damage. Boat anchors crush ancient coral. Unaware tourists trample and kill coral architecture that took centuries to evolve. Poachers slaughter giant clams and sea turtles. 42-year-old Noah Idong equates survival of the reefs with survival of Palawan culture. Because Palawans are very close to their environment. They're born and raised in the sea, in the, on the land, and so they, they can feel for the land. If uh, something goes wrong, then they can feel it. That's what makes a Palawan. For centuries, the people of Noah Edong's village gazed and walked unobstructed from their homes to the sea. When this road was cut through that access without their blessing, Noah, the quiet marine biologist, became an environmental activist. So every time I come to my village and I, I see it, it reminds the failures that we have. And uh, I want to go back and try and assist whatever I can to, to do things right for uh, development. He began alone. Few governmental resources and no organizations had emerged to protect the environment. He was compelled to work delicately within tribal tradition, which respected nature on the one hand, but resisted environmental regulation on the other. I had to go and, you know, try to start the kind of research we wanted and then try and look for funding, uh, look for donors, and then look for lawyers. and. At the same time, uh, you know, work with the community to uh, expand their knowledge. So uh, we tried to do everything that needed to be done. That's uh, what I tried to do. Noah Idong oversaw installation of mooring buoys at Palau's popular dive sites, so boaters need not drop anchors onto reefs. He developed research which supports fishermen's claims of shrinking catches. After presenting this persuasive evidence to tribal chiefs, he worked with them to revive an ancient tradition called bull, which forbids fishing during spawning seasons. That work led to passage of a sustainable marine resources bill, the first legislation in Palau's history that places formal, life-sustaining restrictions on fishing. All this he accomplished in steady, patient, non-confrontational style. Being confrontational is not going to work in Palau because you may work, win one battle, but then they'll make sure that you never get in the door. So the thing that I really wanted to do is to make sure that people trust me. Palau became the world's newest nation just last October. Previously, as a United States trust territory, it received generous amounts of economic aid. That aid came with U.S. environmental regulations attached. Now at a critical crossroads, this youngest of nations must develop a harmony of economic growth and environmental protection simultaneously. Noah Ida Ong believes this harmony can be achieved by setting sustainable limits on fishing and tourism. Till that is accomplished, he fears outside investors will rush to seize short-term profits by cashing in on his homeland's potential as a destination resort. I'm appealing to the Palawan heart is saying, look, you know, you are, we are still Palawans and we can still reach into our hearts and, and help this uh, uh, maintain our, our resources as we, our fathers used to do. If we lose what we have, we can find it elsewhere. For outstanding environmental achievement in the island nations, a 1995 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Noah Idong of Koror, Palau.